Be blessed with wisdom, knowledge, utterances, revelation from Apostle Make Orupo. The making of a champion. The making of a champion. Since it's a festival of champions, let's look upon the scriptures and um, look at what the Bible says about the, the champions of the kingdom. Um, it's not glorious for one person to shine among many people. The glory of God is revealed when a tribe and a generation of people are raised. Where everyone represents different dimensions in God. Hallelujah. And so this evening, who is on the keyboard? No, you don't go. Ah! Ah! This one. You don't, you don't go. You don't go. We are trusting God to ascend fast. We don't have the luxury of time. And you are my wings. You can sing from there. Hallelujah. for 30 minutes and then we we trust the Holy Ghost for what he will do quickly tonight. Hallelujah. We were created in the order of God. And our God was first revealed as a God of power. When you read the scriptures the first revelation of God you will find is his power. His almightiness. And so every creature that is created in the order and in the class of God must function as a more than a conqueror. Because the first revelation of God 
reveals him as a God of power. The Christian has no business living in failure and living as a defeated entity because he was not created in the order of a failure. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, it said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word God used in that scripture is the word Elohim. And the word Elohim means almighty. That means all the mights, anything called might on earth put together is an expression of his reality. He is the summation of might. He is the aggregation of might. So when you are looking at God, the first thing you will discover about him is that he is a God of power. Listen, God has too much power. The reason the Bible says God cannot lie is because anything God says, because of the energy he operates from, that thing becomes. That's why he can't lie. If God says your head is big, the energy that comes out of his mouth, even if it was more, it will become big. If God said now is money, because he says money, everything will turn to money. So it's impossible. It's not like God does not want to. It's impossible for God to lie because of the authority he carries. Anything he says becomes true. That's the God that created us. Because after he introduced him as a God of power, he went to verse 26 and he said, God said, let us make man in our own image. Now, if you study the scripture, the word Elohim refers to plurality in single or in unity. Now, if God decided to create us after the Father, that would have been awesome. Because the Father is the source of reality. If God decided to create us in the image of the Son, that would have been enough. Because the Son is the animator of reality. If God decided to create us in the image of the Holy Ghost, that would have been enough. Because the Holy Ghost is the power of the Godhead. But he didn't decide to create us after one of them. He said, let us make man in our own image. So when you meet man, you meet the Father, the Son, and the Spirit put together. So man becomes the effulgence of the reality of the Godhead. So when we say we are champions, we are not psyching ourselves. It's our DNA. <laughs> it's our DNA. It's not psyching. In you is the dimension of the Father. In you is the dimension of the Son. In you is the dimension of the Holy Ghost. So you are an embodiment of God. Carrying the fullness of his reality. How can you be defeated? You have to be taught how to fail. That's why when Adam was in the garden, Adam didn't know how to fail. The Bible said every name Adam called the animals. That's the name there was. Adam did not know failure. Adam had to be taught how to fail. Because Adam was born in the order of a champion. Failure was alien to him. He had to be educated on how to be a failure. Because it was natural for Adam to succeed. Everyone seated here today in Christ Jesus is more than a conqueror. And so when we are talking about a champion, we are trying to show you who you already are. It's not necessarily an attempt to make you. It's an attempt to draw out what you already carry. He said in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, he said, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. He has given unto us. He didn't say he will give unto us. He has already given unto us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He said, but it's at the mercy of your understanding. It is through the knowledge. It is through the knowledge. So the measure of understanding you have is the extent to which you exercise your dominion as a champion. The exercise of your dominion as a champion is not calling on the Lord now to help you. It's understanding what God has already put in you. Because everything you need is already in you. And so my short charge tonight is to show you the things you carry and how to interact with those things in order to become a champion. Because every champion has credentials that qualify him. Because you are not a champion by talking. You are a champion by, by winning. It is your victories that reveals your championship. It's not your talking about it. And as you receive these truths tonight, 
everybody will go out and begin to conquer and begin to dominate and begin to win it will no longer be a prerogative of few among us it will become an inheritance of every one of us i decree concerning you that victory that defines your championship receive it now in the name of jesus seven credentials of a champion number one every champion is born a champion is a function of dna and that's why i began this morning by teaching us that we were created in the order of god and so the dna of a winner is on our inside adam did not know so when the devil came the argument the devil presented to him was an attempt that he didn't have the dna of god that he needed to do something to have it because both adam and the devil knows that whoever carries the dna of god is a winner so the devil told him did god say if you touch this fruit you will die and he said no god didn't say we will only die he said if we eat it we will die he said even if we touch it we will die and the devil said no god surely knows that you will not die the day you eat of it you will become like god so it was an argument of dna if you become like god you are a winner so he was trying to tell the man that you are not like god whereas when god made the man he already made him like him because if you are made like god you are already a winner and the devil knows that you can't challenge somebody who is made like god so what you need to tell him is to get him to think that he's not like god so if he starts trying to be like god that is where his defeat will come from and adam wanted to eat fruit to become like god whereas he was already god because he was created in the image of god but he was not aware and so until we come to that experiential understanding that as he is so are we in this world we will never become champions the Bible said in 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, He said, Whosoever is born of God, overcometh the world. He said, This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. So your championship power is tied to your DNA. And your DNA is tied to the fact that you have believed Christ and you have received Christ. And now the nature of God is imparted into your spirit. So when you want to go against life, you don't go against life by hoping to win. You go against life by an assurance that because Christ is in you, is your hope of victory. Do you see why the systems of the world wants to make us derive value from things other than God? Because he knows that our victory is in Christ. And so you find young men today, they believe their confidence is in the gymming of their chest. And they wear tight clothes. And when they are coming with a huge chest, they build confidence based on the size of their chest. And with that big chest, they end up becoming bodyguards. If you are building chest as a means of exercise, it's good. But if you think your value is in the size of your chest, you just failed. Do you see why young ladies want to be naked? Because they think their value is in the exposure of their body. Do you see why people build confidence in their fingernails? They build confidence in their eyelashes. They build confidence in their jewelries. All of that is an attempt of the devil to take our attention from what is our true advantage. Your glory is not in what you wear. Your glory is not in your fingernails. Your glory is Christ in you. Christ in you. Christ in you. Because that's where the DNA of the champion is imparted. Somebody does a master's degree and is shouting everywhere that I have a master's degree. How can you present paper where spirits are talking? You present paper where spirits are talking. Spirits. Spirits. No. There is a realm where paper cannot suffice. There is a realm where your dress code cannot suffice. There is a realm where your human intellect cannot suffice. When you come into that realm, you come into that realm in Christ Jesus. That's why he said, in my name in my name cast out devils that means you are coming in me and if you come in me as i am so you are this is why the apostles of old were conscious of christ paul said we preach christ and him crucified peter said christ is our salvation it is in the name of jesus we are saved because they knew that our victory is tied to our association with christ everybody who is making impact in this world in addition to education in addition to certificates in addition to human connection he knows that it is the god on his inside that gives him the victory we don't talk against 
human development capacities. No, we don't talk against that. But what we are saying is that all of that are platforms that the Holy Ghost takes advantage of. If you build that and you stand on that, you will fall because that's a shaky ground. If you build your confidence on Christ that is in you, you will be shocked that even a widow can be a champion. He said, women, women, receive their dead back to life. He said, weak men were made valiant in battle. What was the technology of bringing power out of their spirit? Because for a, for a moment, they decided not to look at their weakness. They decided to look at the Christ that was in them. And the moment you look at the Christ that is in you, your weakness becomes the platform that God glorifies himself. He said, the eyes of the Lord moves to and fro the earth, looking for the weak that he may perfect his strength. So that thing you call the weakness is not a weakness. What is your true weakness is that you have not looked up to Jesus. He said, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's where our strength is. Moses came to him and said, I cannot speak. I'm slow in speech. And he asked him, who created the mouth? You are limiting God when you focus on your weakness. But when you focus on God, even your weakness becomes a basis of glory. I prophesy over someone here tonight. That weakness the devil has used for years to keep you in captivity. It becomes the platform that God will ride upon tonight. Champions are born. A lion is born a, a champion. It's a DNA thing. No matter how well a deer trains, he can't come to fight with a lion. Even a novice, a lion that is a novice, is a terror in the kingdom of deers. They know. Antelopes know that even in their best training, a young lion is a terror to them. And so it would be foolishness for an antelope to come challenge a lion that he went to be trained in the Chinese college. He's not built for it. Because of the DNA, the finger of the lion is trained to tear. The resilience of the lion is built for battle. The teeth of the lion is built to tear. And the lion, if he smells blood, his elements are activated. Because there is something about the lion's DNA that makes it a killer. That's what DNA does. Everyone who is born of God becomes a terror to darkness. Everyone born of God becomes a natural champion because he's created in the image of a God that was introduced as an almighty God. Most times, the things we are looking for are already on our inside. We are just not aware. We are not aware. How can you be like Christ and be demonized? How can you be like Christ and be poor? Did you not know that when Christ came into you, he took everything away? He said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Because sin was the basis for your fall. He took it away. He looked at him again. He said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It was sin that took you from glory. Christ brought it back. How can you ever be defeated? Somebody will tell himself today, I stop looking at myself. I look at the Christ that is in me. In fact, Paul was speaking. And this is what Paul said. Paul said, the first Adam. Paul was trying to give us an illustration. Even if Adam didn't fall, Paul is trying to tell us that the new technology we have is superior to the first Adam before he fell. Because what God made available for us and to us in Christ is superior to what was, even if Adam didn't fall. He said the first Adam is a living soul. He said the last Adam is a life-giving spirit. He said the first Adam is of the earth. So earthy. He said the last Adam is the Lord from heaven. He said as we have borne the image of the first Adam, we must also bear the image of the last Adam. And so what Paul is talking about is, even if Adam didn't fall, what we have now is superior to what Adam had. Because where Adam is a living soul, we are a life-giving spirit. Where Adam was of the earth, we are lords from heaven. So we are more than conquerors indeed. Because we come in the order of the victorious Adam. I speak over somebody's lives today. Everything limiting and undermining the quality of your existence. You ride above that thing tonight. Yeah. Champions are conscious of their DNA. This is why we don't talk carelessly. No. When you become aware, it shows. It's not in the battle, it shows. When a champion steps out, there's a way he dresses. 
You don't find a champion dressed naked. No. No, no. I am noble. I am noble. You don't find a champion talk carelessly. Have you seen the lion in the jungle? They move majestically. It is only the antelope that is turning everywhere. The lion has gravity. He comes majestically like a king. How can I be naked walking on the street? How could you be gossiping? How could you be talking evil? No. You are a warrior. You are more than a conqueror. You are a, a sign and a wonder to your generation. There are many things you can't do if you realize your DNA. Because anything Jesus will not do, you will not do. Anywhere Jesus will not be found, you will not be found. Because as he is, so are you now. Many are not walking in the victory that is available to them. Because they are not yet aware. Do you know how awkward it will sound? If you heard that Jesus sat down and was gossiping somebody. Jesus? The mouth that cast out devils? The mouth that cleanses the lepers? The mouth that causes the lame to walk? The mouth that speaks and the blind hears? How can that mouth be involved in gossip? So Jesus will sit down somewhere slandering somebody. No, that's the ministry of the devil. The devil is the slanderer, not Jesus. And so when you know you carry his DNA, you pattern your life after him. You pattern your life. It's a consciousness. And when that awakening comes to you, everything around you changes. Because Jesus lived in this life dominating every day, every time. The Bible said of all that Jesus did, if they were to be written, he said no book on earth would have contained it. That means every day in Jesus' life is a miraculous day. Moses brought four million people and parted the Red Sea. Elijah came and parted the Red Sea. You say that is glorious. When Jesus shows up, he doesn't part the Red Sea. He walks on it. It's called dominion. He doesn't need to part it. It's one level to part the sea. It's another level to walk on the water. Because you don't need to part the sea. The sea can't be an obstacle. That's the realm Jesus operates in. It's a realm that is superior to nature. It's a realm that is superior to limitation. And when God gave us the DNA of Jesus, he gave us the best that we could ever ask for. That's why he said he has given us all things. Because Jesus is all things. All things that pertains to life and to godliness. Most of us here, we carry the consciousness of our grandfathers. And so somebody comes bragging. Why is he bragging? His father is the vice president. His uncle is a governor. His auntie works with uh, Chevron. Ah! That's why you are bragging. It's a woe unto him that put his trust in the arm of flesh. When you find a champion speak, he speaks because Christ is in him. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me. Thank God for your uncle that is a governor. But I cannot stand on the premise of my uncle. I stand on something that is eternal. Because a time will come where both me and my uncle will leave this body. Christ will still be relevant in eternity. If your consciousness changes today, you will be shocked how nature will begin to respond to you. Did you not read? He said he sustains all things by the word of his power. All things. A man who comes into Christ and builds his consciousness on Christ, all things responds to him. That's a champion. It's a DNA team. What DNA do you carry? Thank God my father is a good man. But I don't walk in the order of my father. Thank God I have great uncles. I don't walk in the order of, the, of my great uncles. My life ended on the cross. And the life I live now began at the resurrection. It is Christ that I look like. It is Christ that I strive for. It is Christ that I live for. And it is Christ that I mirror to a generation. That's why I'm unstoppable. No matter how great your father is, there may be something that stopped him. The only one that was unstoppable was Christ. Even death could not hold him captive. The Bible said, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The one who went to the grave and came back, that's the one I look like. That's the one I live like. That's the one I operate like. Christ in you is the hope of glory. I'm not training my son to look like me. I'm training my son to look like Jesus. Because he may have higher measure than I will ever have. Because Jesus is a world. Everybody is exploring. Tell somebody I'm a champion. I celebrate my championship. 
Because as he is, so I am in this world. And so the first credential of a champion is the consciousness of the DNA of God. The moment that DNA comes, you become an overcomer. Because whoever is born of God overcometh the world. He said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Your greatest asset is not a car. Your greatest asset is not a visa. Your greatest asset is Christ in you. Christ in you can give you a car. Christ in you can give you a visa. Christ in you can give you good health. Stop priding your life over things that can be taken away from you. You have become like a God. Live as such. Praise God. The second thing that makes a champion is light. Every champion is a carrier of light. If you don't have light, you are finished. Because one of the greatest undoing of mortals is darkness. The Bible said in Psalm 74 verse 20, it said the dark places of the earth is the habitation of cruelty. And then I asked myself, where are the dark places of the earth? And God took me to Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3. He said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is lifted upon thee. He said, For darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness did not select some places. Darkness covered the whole earth. And he said, Gross darkness, the people. So when you are finding the dark places of the earth, find all the locations of the earth where men dwell. There's darkness there. Because darkness wants to kill and destroy men. But there is a, a victory that we have. He said, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So, even though darkness is a threat to men, anybody who possesses light becomes glorified in darkness because the glory of light is in darkness. And so, when we receive Christ, in addition to his nature, a light was brought into our spirit, a light that intimidates darkness. He said, the darkness comprehended it not. There is nothing darkness can do to understand light. Darkness was not created to have authority over light. And so the moment a man possesses light, instantly, that man becomes an overcomer. When you see men do exploit, don't copy them. Find out what they know. The results they command is an outcome of the light that they possess. If you gain that light, you will command the same result. Every result on earth is an answer to a kind of light. The moment light comes, results become byproduct. And so when you find people who are struggling, their problem is not what they think it is. Their problem is lack of truth. Job was speaking in Job 29 verse 4. He said, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, he said, by light I walked through darkness. And in Job chapter 1, it calls him the greatest of all men that lived in the east. So the greatness of Job was tied to the light that Job had. And so when the devil wants to destroy you, he comes for the light that you carry. This is why you cannot allow that light go dim. This is why you have to hold on to that light. Because the light that God gives to you becomes the source of your victory. And what is that light? That light is the word of God. He said the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us but before he talked about it he said the world was life and he said the life was the light of men so when a man wants to become a champion he stops living by the philosophy of men he stops living by the traditions of his ancestors he starts living by the truth of scriptures the truth of scripture is what makes you a champion in life there are many people even pastors when you ask them he said that's not how my people do it and jesus looked at them and he said oh you have made the word of God of none effect by your tradition. That tradition that you are living by is the reason why you will sink. Our fathers were inspired by demons. They didn't know God. Even the things they did that looked morally right were inspired by demons. Because most times when a devil wants to deceive you, he shows you a good that has death at the end. Because the tree is called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There is a way that cement right unto a man. The end is death. So even the things that our forefathers did that appeared to be good were inspired by dead spirits. Spirits of death and iniquity. So we cannot pick anything from what our ancestors believed. What we live by is the truth of God's word. That's why I say by the truth. 
He said, Sex not. He said, Let the word of God dwell in you richly. And he said to Timothy, in 1 Timothy 4 13 and 15, he said, Until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. He said, Let this thing dwell in you richly, that your profiting may be made manifest to all. So, what brings you into victory is the light you are treading with. In your marriage, what is the light you are working with? In your business, what is the light you are working with? In your career, what is the light you are working with? In your ministry, what is the light you are working with? As spiritual as ministry is, you can't just start hoping that God will support you. God will support you to the degree of light that you have. This is why many people doing ministry die doing it. Many people enter marriages, they die in it because they didn't enter with revelation. Somebody wants to get married. He see a young man who carved his beard with a big chest. He said, this is the man of his dream. That chest you admire, they will use it as a punching bag on you tomorrow. That chest will become what you dread the most. Somebody wants to marry, he looks as a young lady because her buttocks is big. He said, this is the woman of my dream. A day will come when you see her coming, you will run. Your heart, high blood pressure will come. Because you didn't enter marriage with light. You enter marriage with lust. And the devil will use that lust to plunder you. There is nothing you are permitted to do in life without light. Light is the key for life. If a man wants to live a glorious life, he must find light in everything. Don't say you are late when you have not had light. You meet people, they say they are 25. All their mates are married. What light do you have to go into marriage? You are shouting your mates are married. Do you know some of your mates are dead? If you want to be like all your mates, are you aware that some are in prison? Stop putting pressure on yourself. You want to marry, what do you know? You are shouting, your friends have business. You want to start business. What do you know? Your authority is tied to your light. And if you don't have light, you will be drowned. The devil will wait for the day of your shining and cut you off. Your insurance in this kingdom is the light at your disposal. Don't look at people and put yourself under pressure. Nobody is late. Your ignorance is your lateness. If you want to add speed to your life, get light. When light comes, light is a commander. People pick gullible things from society. And they pattern their lives after that. Somebody is praying, I need a good husband. Are you a good wife? What we should pursue is not what society is throwing at us. It's light. It's light. You know it's time to get married. What do you know? You know it's time to get a job. To get business. What do you know? Champions don't wish it. Champions enter through illumination. When you know, the door opens to you. Did you not read what Paul said in Ephesians 1 17? He said, For this cause I pray to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that He may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling, the exceeding greatness of the riches that is available to the saints in light, and the power that God wrought towards us. When he rose Christ from the dead. The hope of your calling. The riches of your existence. And the power you walk with. Is all tied to the light that you possess. These guys know how these things work. If you read that scripture in the Greek. You'll be shocked. How many things Paul was collocating together. He said for this cause I pray. To the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he may grant unto you Sophia. That's wisdom. It is intelligent knowledge. The ability to make the right choices. The ability to discern between good and evil. And he didn't stop there. And revelation is apocalypse, access into reality. And he didn't stop there. He said that the eyes of your understanding that may be enlightened that you may know. The word know is the word epignosis. That means coming to intercourse with knowledge. Mingle with knowledge until you become like knowledge. And the word enlightened is the word for tizzle. That light may shine upon you. So you need Sophia, Apocalypse, Epignosis, and Fortizo to come into glory. Meanwhile, you know nothing. You are sitting down saying, Heaven helps those who help themselves. That's why it has helped some to the grave. There are gullible things people pick in society. 
the age where they should pursue truth they don't pay the price to secure truth you are not you are not sung into championship you walk your way there through knowledge and revelation when you find people making impact don't envy them find out what they know that's what set them apart the reason many never rise is because instead of receiving challenge and going to seek truth they want to slander people and that makes them go backward faster because the energy they should have used to invest into their destiny they wasted trying to pull others down and when God lifts a man up there's nothing you can do to bring him down light champions they are beings of light why do you think the angels cannot be defeated they dwell in light everything about them is light light confess authority light confess power and any man who carries light exercises dominion the third thing about champions is consecration no champion lives carelessly from your talking to what you wear to what you do every champion is a creature of laws if you want to come into the realm of champions you must be governed by laws it is not a gift it is something men who merit it end because of the discipline they put themselves to did you not read about job he said i have a covenant with my eyes that i will not look upon the virgins there was a consecration for purity that consecration was what imparted the power to be the greatest man from the east he didn't have that power because he loved power or because he wished it he built his way into it by consecration many people are lawless anything can get into their world and take their attention and they say they want to be champions you wake up in the morning the first thing you touch is, on, is your phone and the last thing you touch before you sleep is your phone and you say you are a champion if you are made a champion won't you be shocked maybe you should live around those who are making impact for one day you will see why you were even if you were even if they made you one you would have called it spiritual fraud live around people and see the laws that govern them you meet certain people every five minutes of the day they can account for it that's the level of consecration that bets what they command god cannot bet anything that has no consecration at its foundation before Samson was born he told the woman you will not taste of any strong drink the, the reason that guy can come with so much strength is consecration if you touch strong drink you defy his power championship is born from the womb of consecration find out any champion he doesn't live like every other person and you check the scripture you find consecrations replete you look at the life of Joseph he said, I cannot touch you and commit this evil against God. Genesis 39 verse 9. Joseph had a consecration of purity. Even when he was in the prison, he didn't break his consecration. It was consecration that gave him that level of power and authority. Daniel and his friend, Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 and 20. The Bible said they refused to defy themselves by the portion of the king's meat. And in verse 20, it said Daniel and his friends were 10 times better than their peers. It was not a gift. It was born by consecration. If you study Daniel's life, you will discover Daniel was growing in authority from one level to another. There was a time the king dreamt and he called all the wise men. Daniel could not tell him what the dream was. He said, give us time. There is a God that reveals secrets. Because he had not gotten enough authority in the revelationary realm. There is a God that reveals secret. Daniel will have to go and pray. But as you study Daniel's life, you see him in consecration. The Bible said three times in a day, Daniel prayed facing Jerusalem. Even when the king said nobody should pray, Daniel opened the window and kept praying. He will not break that consecration for anything. Not even the lion's den could stop him. And the day came, Daniel became so powerful, a hand wrote on the wall. And nobody could read it. We are not even talking interpretation yet. Read it. What language is this? And Daniel shows up. The Daniel that will tell you there is a God that reveals secrets will no longer tell you, give me time. His consecration had conquered time. And Daniel will look at the writing without going to pray, without going to consult God. I thought you say, until God reveal, man will not know. 
there's a level your consecration bring you to you begin to live among the gods he gave the man the judgment courts of heaven he said god exalted you gave you a kingdom that stretched from one end to the other of the earth he said but you decided to worship the god of as you grow in consecration you are sent a point come where you begin to dwell where the angelic realm order and the angelic order dwells mene mene take care of us nobody knew that language before in fact before that time nobody knew anything about tongues so before we knew about speaking in tongues people like daniel knew it because they went to the world where that tongues were originated and he spoke in tongues and he did not just speak in tongues he interpreted it he said you have been weighed in the balances how do you know how they weigh men what is the weight how do they weigh men that means this guy was doing business in the world that nobody knew no wonder before they invited him even the queen said there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods he said light and understanding is in this man he said he has power to explain hard sentences and the dissolving of doubt so when you have doubt call daniel he will clear your doubt because of the realm he was operating and through to the walls of a hidden queen this is not a believer this is a godless woman giving a testimony about a righteous man because of consecration and when the guy showed up he read it he interpreted it and that night the greatest kingdom in do what everybody is doing they say today is white gene all of us enter white gene tomorrow they say it's pencil gene everybody enter pencil gene today they say they are babbing haircut they clear everywhere everybody is babbing today they say beard gang you are in beard gang you have no direction there is a demonic control because there are worldly trends and there are many kingdom functionaries who are carried away by worldly trends you see their picture four years ago they are all wearing fubu jeans now it's tight jean all of them are wearing tight jean now it's torn jean everybody's jean is torn and if they say pions, when you are ruled by the world system the bible spoke concerning john he said he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth that's a man of consecration you don't manipulate him by the energy of society you don't manipulate him by the trends of society he dwelt with his god and when he came out he was different from everybody how can you be mentored by a system and you hope to change that system are you not deceiving yourself you must be consecrated from a system to be able to exercise dominion over that system and when john came he caused that system and the system dried up because of the power that consecration gave him find out champions they are beings of consecration you don't have consecration around study you don't have consecration around your mouth you don't have consecration around your eyes you don't have consecration around your friends you don't have consecration around your talking and you say you are a champion any charlatan can enter your world and immediately he becomes your friend tomorrow you are no longer reading books you are going to clubs you are playing ps anything that comes goes and you say you are a champion you are deceived champions don't live like that they are rigid they are rigid sometimes they are so rigid that, why do you think great men are always busy they are busy because they are always investing in themselves that's what consecration comes to do it gives you room for self-investment you are on call from morning to night and you want to affect your world somebody will call you what did you eat how did you enjoy it ah is this soup still existing and then you are talking about soup for two hours and you want to change your world somebody calls you in the morning have you woken up if i've not woken up how did i pick and you say you want to change your world no you can't champions are afraid like that there's a time where we pick when we pick calls and if you don't call when we pick calls sorry we respect you but we won't pick and it's not everybody's number we save on our phones we save your number in our phone if you have a part to play in our destiny. See, there is a way the devil will see you before he dares to attack you. When the devil finds intensity in your life, he runs away because he knows you are a potential danger. Find a champion pray. He's not lukewarm on the altar. When a champion is praying, he's praying like a man going somewhere. He's praying like a man with vision. He said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man 
availeth much. It's not every prayer that availeth much. It's not every prayer that is dynamic in its working. It's an effectual fervent prayer. Effectual speaks of focus. Fervent speaks of intensity. When a champion is talking, there is intensity. When he's dressing up, there's intensity. There's an urgency about his life. Because I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. A champion knows he doesn't have all the time. He doesn't have all the time. And so he's focused. He's diligent. He's disciplined. He's organized. All of that are articles of intensity. You can't find his life scattered. He knows what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and the energy with which to do it. Our generation is lukewarm. 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 That's the cause. Somebody wakes up, he's dragging his feet when something is about to fail. You don't know that there's such a thing called a Kairos moment. You can miss one second, and one second will cost you everything. Before we flew here, sir, we were told if the private jet does not land, before 5.50 it can't take off by 6 o'clock the airport closes and if it closes they will have to sleep here that means they will look for hotel they will hustle to sleep and find where to stay and tomorrow before they go back whatever they have to do in Abuja is cancelled because of 10 minutes do you know that some people's destiny have been reversed for 10 years because of 2 minutes 2 minutes a step they needed to take they didn't take it they took it later at the end of the day, they didn't meet up what they needed to do. Those of you who catch flight, you know the importance of one minute. You come, they tell you the plane is airborne. Your 70,000 is gone. The meeting you are going for, you may not meet up. People are already gathered. Everything God wants to do can be spoiled because of five minutes. Because a champion knows that the earth is calibrated into time, he puts intensity into his life. Because intensity is what bridges the gap of time. You can't be lukewarm and lackadaisical and make impact. No. They can pour a drum of oil on your head. You will go nowhere. That oil will be made of non-effect because of your laxity. Some people are too lazy. They have a thousand and one reason why it didn't work or why it shouldn't work. Never work with such people. Take them out and bring who can do the job. That's the mentality of champions. Have zero level tolerance for mediocres. Have zero level tolerance for lackluster short people. They are not ready for destiny. When a man becomes ready for destiny, it shows with the urgency he does things. When he's reading, he reads with urgency. When he's going somewhere, there is urgency about his life. Because I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. There are too many lazy people moving around making the number, whereas they can't make the ranks. You can make the number and not make the rank. This is why many fail. They use prophecy to cover up where they should put discipline. They use impartation to cover up where they should put diligence. They use connection, human connection, to cover up where they should put competence. And our world is failing. Don't help somebody because he says he's a Christian. Find out his capacities. Let's not become the reason why the world is failing. The Bible says we are the light of the world. A city set upon the hill that cannot be hid. Do you know there are people who start their day by 5 p.m.? They waste the whole day before they realize why they woke up. And when you ask them, they say, God, they, which God are you talking about? God doesn't encourage laxity. Find out everybody who walked with God. Sometimes it's in the midnight, he wakes them up. And they walk in money. To impart and impute discipline, diligence, competence, focus, and intensity into their lives. I prophesy over someone tonight. Every power within you that is stopping you from being a champion, it breaks tonight. When there's no intensity, procrastination takes over. And what somebody should do at 21, he is beginning to struggle to do it at 38. And then he's hoping for divine intervention. 
champions are men of intensity the fire is too much they don't wait for tomorrow what they can do today because tomorrow has its own problems they finish the work that is meant for today today and sometimes they bring tomorrow's work into today for taking today's work into tomorrow they rather do next tomorrow's work today they finish and finish on time festival of champions you think it's a place for excitement no it's a place for an awakening everything that stopped you from rising it breaks tonight ah, my time is going my time my time my time is going Number five, champions are men that know how to access help. There's nobody making impact who is not helped. Many times, the reason people fail is because they despise their mercy. Either through arrogance, or through ignorance, or through incompetence, or through lackadacity. God sends a man to help you. You see that man. You look at him, you say, we are all the same. Sir, we are not all the same. There is no realm where we are all the same. Even in the angelic realm, there are angels called elders. We are not all the same. Jesus, the Son of God, needed John the Baptist to validate him and to announce him. If you don't know how to access help, you are finished. And let me give you a quick insight on how to access help. You want to access help, carry the disposition of humility. The posture of humility provokes help more than utterance. When a man sustains the posture of humility, even God is urgent to help him. But when you become arrogant, you are in trouble. The Bible says God resists the proud. He giveth grace to the humble. And nobody rises without grace. You don't know people to honor. You go nowhere. I left Sierra Leone this morning. Sir, I was in Freetown. I left Freetown 4 a.m. Meanwhile, I went to bed by 1 a.m. I slept only 3 hours. I left Freetown 4 a.m. to catch a boat, 5, to get to Luwingi, to catch a flight. They took us, we waited at the airport for another 2 hours, 30 minutes. They flew us to Accra. From Accra, they flew us to Lome. From Lome, they flew us to Abuja. Before I flew to Wari, because I honor the man. Not everybody is the same. There are certain men that are worth 10,000 people in your life. When he told me, come, I knew my itinerary was choked. But I say, yes, sir. There are people you don't say no to. Because when you say no, certain doors may close. Our generation, we are not wise. That's why you can't find champions they burn the bridges that they will use many times in their lifetime if a relationship is to fail let it be on record that you tried your best because god used this man to make men only god makes men but he has many channels and one of the channels he uses is men if jesus needed john the baptist to announce him who are you in fact, when Jesus showed up, John the Baptist said, no, I shouldn't do this. He said, suffer it to be so for now. When the Pharisees came later to, to probe him, he said, it was John. He said, did John. He now used John as a reference. He said, John said, they knew if they say or counter John, they will stone them. Because everybody knew John was the prophet. So Jesus, the son of God, the creator of the universe, needed John to create a season for him. That's how this world works. Every Elisha will need Elijah. Else you will go nowhere. You will go nowhere. So champions know how to access help. Help from God. Help from men. And one of the ways to access help is the disposition of humility. The second way to access help is a state of truthfulness. Nothing burns a bridge like lies. When you err, say you err. 
and try as much as possible not to err too much. But if you have erred, say the truth. Don't let it be discovered later that what you said was a lie. Because the hardest thing to regain is trust. And nobody wants to help a man he cannot trust. That's why many have great potentials, but they go nowhere. Because help is far from them. Humility, truthfulness, and then character, character development, character, character. The first two are also part of character. But when I say character, I'm talking discipline. I'm talking diligence. I'm talking focus. I'm talking morals. I'm talking virtue. I have plenty of them. Because many times, the reason somebody will help you is not because you ask for it. Have you not seen many people asking for help yet not getting it? Whereas those who are not asking for help, help is looking for them. Character. If champions will be born, there are things that must happen. These are some of them. Ah, my God. I wanted to talk about the anointing last, but I'm sensing some energy. I'm sensing some energy. Now I know God wants to help somebody. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Before God gives you power, He checks the love quotient of your heart. It's a risk to empower a man that has no love. He will become a tyrant. He said to Peter, Lovest thou me more than this? Lovest thou me more than this? He's not asking who prays more. He's not asking who quotes scriptures more. He's finding out who loves more. Because power in the hands of a wicked man makes him a tyrant. Until God finds love, He doesn't empower. And so everybody who is a true kingdom champion is born of love. is dominated by love. So God does not see it as a risk to empower him. And finally, is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 
He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God is with him. When God wants to make a champion, there is a spiritual support system he gives to that person. And that spiritual support system is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It is the anointing that makes fishermen become wonder to their generation. It is the anointing that makes fearful men become mighty warriors in the kingdom. Right now, there is about to be a stirring. Can you lift your hands toward heaven? If you are really blessed by this message by Apostle Michael Orubo, please do us a favor by sharing to your loved one and to your group. Please subscribe. Click on the notification bar for more related videos. Thank you and stay safe.